You have to be real delusional to think that these people got there by chance and you making them an enemy or, you know, closing your mind off to learning from them literally is going to take you double the amount of time to figure out what you could have used to basically shorten the learning curve. 100%, 100%. That learning curve, if you don't have anybody guiding you, it's brutal. Does, okay, did, did Michael Jordan have a coach? Everybody that's successful had a coach. So why wouldn't someone have a coach in business? Business is one of the hardest sports in the world. You need a coach. Today, I think we should talk about, we'll have a tactical part, mm -hmm. how to handle customers. Up. Um, what's the word we're looking for? Disgruntled customers. <laughs> okay. And the motivational part. How to have good people around you and stay away from energy vampires. Because okay. that's what I've been thinking about a lot lately. It's like the reason I'm able to excel my growth to success is who I'm around. Yes. Like I'm around heavy hitters that will not accept anything less than greatness. Mm -hmm. Like one of the funny story is one week, you know, started to make some money and I made like $40,000. It was after a big podcast dropped. I made like 40 G's that week. And I go to my homie, I'm like, bro, I just made $40,000. He said, that's it? Are you going to be able to pay your rent? I'm like, bro, you're so disrespectful. You know what I mean? But then I was like, because he makes 40000 a day. And I'm like, there's levels. There's, there's levels, levels to, to it. <laughs> You know what I mean? And after that, I'm just like, I'm around the right people. Like every room I go into, 100%, I'm always the brokest one there. Like seriously, like mm. by far. And I make decent money. I know. And I'm by far. There's like, one time we were at Poppy State, okay? Mm. Three, three of my boys. And I went to go pay. They all looked at me like something was wrong. They were like, looking at me like, bro, put your card away. You're not going to be able to pay your rent this month. Like put your, I'm like, you guys are so... Like, they get weird if I try to pay, like, bro, don't do that. Yeah. Like, I'm always, always the bottom of the total goal, but a lot of people have such a big ego, they're not willing to accept that. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm like, I don't care. You know what I mean? Like, I don't mind at all. If I'm, I want to be the brokers in the room. If I'm the best one in the room, I'm by far in the wrong room for sure. Correct. You know, what do you think about that? I definitely agree. And I, I have watched you, you know, you know, you deal with a lot of very, very wealthy people and... You know, you've told me, like, yeah, I'm always the brokest one in the room. I'm like, he's onto something with that because if you're surrounded by greatness, you're going to, that impartation takes place, you know, and it does take you putting that ego down because if you think like you're better or you want to be in a circle where you're the best and you're not going to, you've reached your cap, basically. You're no longer growing after that. And so, you know, with having the right circle around you is going to determine so where you go in life. I don't care what you think. If you hang around a bunch of broke people, you will soon be broke. If the conversations are gossip and all of this stuff, you're not moving anywhere in life. So what I've learned from you and also some of the successful people in my life, man, they demand excellence. Like they will not take any excuse. And I'm one of those people. I don't, I hate excuses to me. Excuses are a well-planned lie. Like you decided you're not going to be great and I can't, I can't. So I had a client and I love telling this story because I will never forget this woman. This lady, when I first opened the salon, I was the only, I was the intern because I wasn't even paying myself. I was the intern, but the intern with the big vision. And I was like, I know one day I'm going to have a team. One day I'm going to have another lash artist. One day I'm going to be able to hire more people. And this place is going to be full of artists and all of this. But in the beginning, it was just me. And I'm just there grinding, like lashing, doing the best service, the best possible thing. And I had this client. She came in here once and she sees it's only me. And she's like, oh, do you have any other people who work here? I was like, no, was not in yet. This in this salon. Mm -hmm. This is a big salon, by the way. It is a big salon. And it has... Multiple rooms, it's big, so thinking, why would you need all of this space if it's just you? You could have, the person thought you could have just got a suite mm -hmm. if it was just going to be you. And honestly, I sat back like that hurt. It, you know, it sings you. Mm -hmm. And But I had vision and I knew my goal, my end goal was to build a team. 
which now I've done that, right? But at the time, every time this lady will come up in here, she will even go into the workshop room like, oh, what's in here? She's like, oh, this is just so much space. And listen, I'm not throwing shade, but I'm not. one day I asked her, what do you do for work? Because mm -hmm. I'm like, apparently, mm -hmm. she's reached some high <laughs> level that I can't even imagine. And I need to ask questions and learn from this person. Yep. Listen, I asked her, what did you do? She was a part-time teacher somewhere. And at that moment, I understood why she couldn't wrap her head around what I was trying to do mm -hmm. because she just wasn't there yet. She just wasn't there yet. Her vision was not big enough yet. No shade to her or what she does for work, but entrepreneurs, they launch themselves from an airplane and figure out how to build it on the way down. 100%. And it's just the fact of taking these huge risks that scare you and forge you into the Before person that... Growth. Listen, I had my friend send me a picture of when she dropped me off at my lash certification. So how when I tell you, that doesn't even look like me. Mm. I physically look different. It's crazy. Yeah. Like I, the person that took that certification mm -hmm. training and the person sitting before you today are two can different we, can people. Can we pop it up on the YouTube video? <laughs> pop up the photo. We're going to pop, pop it up because up I, I, I literally was like, what? Now, real quick, quick point to that though. Imagine if everyone around you, Jose, your friends, me, if we're all like, why do you have such a big space? So imagine all of us thought like that lady. Yeah. Do you think you'd be here right now? No. Of course not. When you told me you got a salon, I'm like, yeah, like 3,000 square feet or whatever. I'm like, hell yeah, there we go. Now we got to fill it up. Yeah. You know what I mean? You need people like that that can expect more from you and, and see more for you. Yes. You know, you need people at, a little bit ahead of the road. Like, okay, cool. You're going to fill it out. Then we're going to move spaces, go bigger. Not like, why do you need all this space? Yeah. You know, so like um, auditing your circle is so important. Yeah. Like that is honestly like one of the most important things to being successful. And a lot of people are like, how do you get around so many millions? Like when people see the people that I'm around, they're like, they ask one of my buddies who's ultra successful, like mm -hmm. half a billion dollars. They're like, how does Sohab get around all these high level people? Like ask him yeah, that. How do you do that? And then because this, I want to know. And we were talking about this literally yesterday. Uh -huh. And Take you, notes guys. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, and we're actually going up to the ranch of the people that own Dominion Sugar. Okay, what? they're worth a few B. We're going to their ranch, we're with his son. So that's like the level we were with. And then the dude's like, how do you get around to all these people? My boy's like, he's just a good dude. <laughs> like, guys, just being a good person and not being weird. Say it louder for the people <laughs> being in the back. a good person. Like when I'm around, you know, I was with Birdman over the weekend, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not like, so Birdman, are you and Lil Wayne friends? I'm just like, what's up, man? And you just chill. Just keep it going. And if conversation pops up, it pops up. So one, just being a good human. Mm -hmm. Two, not being weird, which is very difficult for a lot of people. And number three, always looking for value. So, you know, like someone that makes seven figures plus a year. If I'm going on a trip with a buddy or something and they're ahead of me, I'm grabbing their bags. I'm like, yo, I got you. Or I'm paying for whatever I can pay for. You know, I'm not going to pay for $50,000 dinner, but I'll pay for the valet. Yeah. Like I'm always looking for ways to provide value, whether it's carrying bags or like I have no ego towards that. And Fat Joe has a really good clip. Mm -hmm. Have you seen it? No. He's talking about DJ Khaled. Okay. He's like, when I'm around, I'm the number one guy. I'm the big dog. But when DJ Khaled's around, Mr. Khaled, you want me to get the door for you? Like, wow. I love Humility. that video. One hundred. I love that video because like I do that all the time. I'm just like, what do you? What, what can I do to provide service to you or value like, for you too? I'm looking at how I can help you out. How can I provide you service? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what the level is at. If you can just always look what's in it for them, yes. not what's in it for me at all times. Like I I give and I expect nothing in return. And I generally mean that. Yeah. And my circle reflects that. that. Yeah. You know? And another thing, like when setting goals too, that a lot of people neglect, like obviously we have financial goals and we have material goals. One of my goals every year, so every year what I do is I'll take two days. I don't, I'm not on my phone. I'll go to an area, a secluded area, and I will just write down my goals and think, right? For the whole game plan for my next five, 10 years and for the year. Mm -hmm. Every January I do this. Mm -hmm. phones on straight D&D, you know? And every year I'm like, what's the net worth of my contact list going to be this year? Mm. Every year my goal is to get the net worth of my contact list bigger than it was last year. Right now it's at $7 billion. 
Wow. So, you know why that's so hard for people? Because of their egos. They don't want to be around so, people doing people. better than them. And so when they do see the people doing better than them, they see them as a threat. Versus, man, I want to know what this person knows so that I can also do well for myself and my family. And I think that's what separates you is because it's not like, and you don't have a problem saying these guys are way more successful than me. Not at all. And I make myself useful. Like you making yourself useful is a super underrated thing because people want you around. Because you're not just, they're like, hey, can you sign my autograph and da, da, da. You're just chilling. Hey, you need, hey, let me carry your bag right quick. Let me, let me be of service. 100%. And when you are of service, people want to bless you. Open doors open for you. People invite you places because they're like, man, so hot. like they said, he's a cool dude. He does this. Hey, he pays for the valet. He he's a good guy to have around. Of service without expecting anything in return. So exactly. That's the key. But just being in that room, you gain so much. Even if they're not talking to you, they could be discussing a strategy amongst themselves, and you're like, oh, that's a good idea. You want me to get you a coffee? You guys Correct. keep talking. I'll be right back. I'll go get you a cup. I don't care. Like, I have no... I, I want to just be in the room. I just want to be a fly on the wall. So I'll tell you a story about how it kind of all got started for me, getting into the right circles. Mm -hmm. So I was, uh, like, 20 years old, security job, my rent-a-cop job, and being a personal trainer. So I saw this high-level marketer post. He's looking for a personal trainer as I was scrolling at work. Mm -hmm. As soon as I saw it, he doesn't know me. I don't know him. I never messaged him before. I bought a ticket to go to Cali, a red eye flight. I was like, I'm just gonna leave. And so I, I get off work, I rush home, I have a flight in two hours, literally. And I just, I DM him really quick, he doesn't respond. I take my red eye flight, and I'm like, I'm just gonna show up to his office. I had no hotel book, no Airbnb, nothing. I just was gonna like, when I get there, I'm gonna figure it out. Mm -hmm. So I land around, you know, Cali's three hours back, so I land around 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. I get off the plane and I just go straight to his office. I Google it, go to his office. He doesn't know I'm coming, nothing, okay? And I'm, I'm at his office, his front door is right here. I'm about to knock and I get so nervous. Yeah. And I just like walk away. I'm like, let me see what he's doing first. I go, I go to his Instagram, all I see is, I'm in Disneyland. Oh my God. You're like, no. I'm like, no. So I, um, I, w I get a hotel. And then I wait till tomorrow, which is Saturday. And I wait in front of his office from 6 to 10 just in case he shows up. I'm like, he's an entrepreneur. He's probably going to show up. Mm -hmm. Doesn't show up. So I get a hotel again. Do it again on Sunday. Wait. Doesn't show up. I do it again. Get a hotel. Wait on Monday mm -hmm. from 6 to like 9. Okay. And then I'm like, this doesn't, this is not going to work. Whatever. I'm like, my plan failed. I'm just going to go home. You know, mm -hmm. I'm walking away. Tell me God isn't real. Okay. I'm walking away. And I see one of his employees walking with a, uh, a shirt for the company. And I'm like, hey, you work with Billy. His name was Billy. I'm like, you work with Billy? He, as I'm walking away to go home, wow. he's like, yeah. I'm like, bro, I want to be his trainer. Can you give me an interview? Mm -hmm. And he's like, who are you? I'm like, I just showed up. I want to be Billy's trainer. Mm -hmm. He's like, all right, I'll talk to him. Give me 15 minutes. And he goes inside. 15 minutes goes by. He texts me. And like my nerves just settling. He's like, come inside, Billy's ready for you. I'm like, wow. bro. So I go and I walk in. It's like a big conference room with like seven people here, seven people here, Billy right here. And they're like, go sit down right there. Three cameras. I'm like, I just, <laughs> you weren't even ready for me. And then I pitch myself uh -huh. and then I get the opportunity. How did you pitch yourself? I don't remember. I blacked out. <laughs> you were performing under pressure. I performed. I fully blacked out. I just. Yeah. I answered their questions. I. I don't even know what happened. Then I just mm -hmm. got out. I remember being so proud of myself. Yeah. And then, but I, he was like, "I'll let you know in an hour." I didn't hear from him for three days. Then he messages me, says, "All right, we're good." So what I did, I broke up with my girl at the time. <laughs> we we're dating for like three years. You're horrible. Bro. I took my dog next day in my Corolla and drove cross country. The wrong and that, in my Roddy, and then that's how I started my journey. But wow. like, I really took a risk. I just put myself in the position. So people are like, how do you get around all the right people? How do you do it? You got to force yourself in the position. And I was of value of them. I did it for free initially. I'm like, I'll just train you for free. Yeah. People don't want to work for free. You know, I, was, I literally broke up with my girl, took my dog cross country and got an Airbnb, just lived off my savings for like three months until I provided enough value. I worked for him for free and then eventually got paid a little bit, just enough to live. 
and I still had to work at another job just to really make ends meet. Yeah. And then just, but being around him, being a fly on the wall, I wanted to be a celebrity personal trainer. That was my goal. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be a digital marketer. He yeah. was a digital marketer. So I just, I would train him in exchange. I could sit in all his classes because he would teach people how to do it. Wow. So I would just sit in all his classes. I'd be around like, hey, can I go into a meeting with you? Can I be a fly on the wall? I just kept doing that for two years until I had an opportunity to do it myself. Look at how your life has changed because you took that risk. Great. So that, like, people are like, how do you get around it? You have to take the risk. You have to be of service. You have to provide value. And I mean, just being around that guy. And then now I could leverage his name mm -hmm. in the space. I have him as a good friend. I could call him for advice. Wow. All because I did. Just took that crazy risk, that chance. Yeah. And one of the things that I always say is when you don't burn people, man, people are willing to help you. Like, what do you need? How can I help you get to that next point? And like you were saying, like, you always just look for what value you can always. provide. Like this guy, he was somewhere where you wanted to be and you worked for free. But if we look at it from a different with different eyes, really you knew that that was the training ground for you to to do what you're doing now and many people are not willing to do that they're not willing to fly across the country to even talk to a person you've never spoken to taking a risk getting hotels you didn't even have the money to do it and you were just a man with a prayer like i hope Crazy. this works out and now how many years has this been this Since was about five years ago five years ago now you drive a lambo you're very very successful I mean, it worked out, but it's because you didn't have ego. You didn't see these people as competition. You humbled yourself and you were like, man, if I can just get around these guys and, and be of service to them and add value to them, I know that I'm going to be elevated and be able to basically grow in this in this business and that's led you to many other relationships and like and, I'm saying, and the thing about successful people mm -hmm. people like we look at competition differently yes i want to dominate everyone i'm around all my buddies that are ahead of me i'm like i'm gonna smoke you when i'm your age i'm like oh you you suck you're mm -hmm. give me 15 years watch where i'm at but it's all in healthy competition but yes. we all want everyone to win yeah i don't see anyone as Rosa's taking this opportunity from me or this is happening. Like, I'm like, hey, Rosa, let's go. I'm going to take my hand. Let's go up to the mountain together. Yep. And that's what a lot of people don't understand about successful people. Like, we want everyone to win. There's so, we have an abundant mindset. There's no scarcity. Like, yes. we're like, hey, there's so much for all of us to eat. Like, let's go. But, but yeah, so that's, if you're struggling to get around the right people, one, go to conferences. Go f find a way to work for someone for free. Find someone that you want to be like and then try to figure out how to get around them mm -hmm. whether they do your service, i would do your classes i paid my mentor a ton of money just to be around them like it just you just have to find a way to get around people you, you really, have to really you just want the proximity because in the proximity is where you learn how they do things it's not something that i can teach necessarily but them seeing like somebody interns here they're gonna see how i treat the client how i scale the business how i do certain things and from that they learn more than me just telling them like okay step one this step two this yep and so that is very key being in proximity and i know for women let me tell you i've been in the industry for two years there is a weakness in a lot of women that they see other women as competition. And because of that, they forfeit so much opportunity. So much opportunity is lost because of that mentality of, oh, they're doing better than me or oh, they're my competition. I. How do you get past it? There, I don't have competition. And I'm fairly new. I don't look at anybody that's been in the industry longer than me or is currently doing better than me. I don't see that as competition. I'm like, what does this girl know that I don't know? And that's what I want to know. And in order to know that, I have to connect somehow, mm -hmm. you know, instead of being like, oh, no, I'm going to be the best. Like, you have to be real delusional to think that these people got there by chance and you making them an enemy or you know, closing your mind off to learning from them literally is going to take you double the amount of time to figure out what you could have used to basically shorten the learning curve. 100%. 100%. That learning curve, if you don't have anybody guiding you, it's brutal. Does Okay. Did, did Michael Jordan have a coach? 
everybody that's successful had a coach. So why wouldn't someone have a coach in business? Business is one of the hardest sports in the world. You need a coach. Yeah. I take my mentor budget very serious every year. That's one of the biggest things I invest. LeBron spends a million on his body every year. Wow. You know, so it's like you have to invest in your mind every year. You're, yeah. You have to invest in coaches. And another thing about being around the right people, like when I was around Billy, one massive takeaway, I was like, he's just a regular dude. If he could do it, I could do it. So just being around him, knowing that he's not more special than me or has something I don't have, I was just like, oh, he could do it. He plays video games all the time. He's like, he's just a normal dude. So that was one thing. And then another thing about proximity is the law of exposure, mm. which is my favorite law because once you've been exposed to something, you can't be unexposed. Yes. So if you're exposed to someone making X amount of money a month, you're like, okay, it's, it's possible. possible. If you see someone driving a Lambo, it's possible. So the law of exposure and forcing yourself around. Like I used to do all the, the things that you would hear, like drive around the nice neighborhoods. There's a, an area in Virginia called Leesburg. Mm -hmm. I would always drive my Corolla, well, busted 2015 Corolla with a missing hubcap and the bumper. <laughs> I literally put a screw in the bumper to hold it up because I didn't want to pay to get it fixed. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would drive around these expensive, these houses were probably like two, $3 million. Nice house. I would drive every day. It was an hour from my house. I would go to my security job, then I would go to the neighborhood, drive, then I would go home. Every were day. you driving because you were trying to catch vision of what you wanted your future life to be? Or were you trying to maybe have a connection with somebody that lived in that neighborhood? I was shopping for houses. <laughs> I was shopping for, I wasn't trying to get a connection. No, I just, I wanted to, I was shopping for houses. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll probably get that house, maybe change the front. I didn't like the thing. Mm -hmm. I literally had like $7. Like I was broke. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was, I had no money, but yeah. I was just shopping. I was literally shopping for houses. You had vision. 100%. So just that proximity and the law of exposure, if you can use that law to your advantage, mm -hmm. it will change your life 100%. And you do that by getting around the right people. Yeah, and networking. So I'm gonna host a networking event probably in like June. And the reason for that is because I want to bring successful people so that they can all network. Man, in this industry, it's about who you know. It's about who you know. Like, you know, when we shot the, the course the other day, those guys were like, oh my God, so I was so connected. They saw the video that you're like sitting with Birdman. They were like, oh, like, they were so like, we need to work with this guy. And it's because you're connected to me we went there, now they have some connection to you. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because literally sky's the limit. Sky's the limit if you just are a person of integrity. And I say this, my girls know, have integrity. You, the guy that owns this building, he owns 1,900 properties. He said, you can always build another business, but once you start burning people, you're done. Your reputation's done. You're done. That thing's gonna follow That's you no matter advice. what kind of, I can own this building today, and if I have a bad rep, nobody's gonna wanna That's lease great here. great advice, yeah. So I've always remembered that, and I've taken L's upon L's upon L's, and you know, not ranting on social media about people who burn me and stuff like that, why? Because I wanna attract the right people who are gonna help me elevate my business. And you love smoke too. I do, man. Rose, Rose I be having to bite the sides of my cheeks because they really think that it, it's sweet. You know, <laughs> Rosa loves smoke. I'm yeah. like, uh, but you know, I just call you and you're like, yeah, don't, do it, don't do it, bro. Don't do it, bro. Don't do it. So you know, I, I know who to call. Yeah, for sure. Because if I call other people, like Olivia, <laughs> Olivia's like, we we roll it we, up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so I know sure. not to call her at all. Yeah, actually. yeah, yeah. That's great self-awareness, so, you know? But you know, it's it's the thing about business, serving people, getting yourselves in the right rooms with the right people, not seeing them as competition, being of service, you know, just inserting yourself of where, like, doing free work so that you can learn how to propel your business forward. All of those things have caused you to be where you are today. The network is, is it's so important. And let's, let's convert this into something a little more tactical, like dealing with customers that aren't that happy. Right. I want to talk about that. Mm. So I heard someone well, listening to a podcast one time. Mm -hmm. And one thing that really stuck with me that I still do to this day is if someone gives you a bad review, or they're very negative, they are probably gonna give you the best review 
and give you the most positive reaction if you can fix it. Because mm -hmm. if they're willing to do it negatively, they'll probably do it positively too. Mm, so if you can, good. so if you can, so you get a negative thing, don't take it personal. Look at it. Sometimes people are just going off the rails and they say false things. But if it's generally something you like critical feedback, look at it, give them a call, do free work on them, make it right somehow. And they'll be your biggest advocate yeah. if you can flip that. Yeah. So if you get a negative comment, don't take it personal, see how you can flip it. And then they'll be your number one fan. Yeah. And for me, listen, I'd rather take the L. If something is not correct with anyone who I work with, I'm like, okay, how can we fix this? I don't, I don't stay with the mentality of, oh, well, no. I'm like, how can we fix this? Because I always go to what's the solution here? And we as entrepreneurs have to always think, this is what's happening currently. What is the solution instead of focusing on the problem? Because focusing on the problem is not solving anything. It's really, what's the solution here? The girl didn't like her lashes. Come back. Let's do a full removal. I'm going to do a better job at explaining what it is. So we're on the same page. The expectation is the same. Before, when I first started lashing, I didn't do the client console. So yes, I did piss off a couple of people. Yeah. Now I'm very thorough. I ask the right questions. I show pictures. I'm like, hey, if they ask for mega, I'm like, have you ever had lashes before? They're like, no, I'm like, I'm not giving you mega. It's too bold, too dark, too intense. Let's start with a hybrid. It's the middle ground. So now I know how to educate so that we prevent those I'm not happy with this, da, da, da. And then, listen, honestly, there are going to be some women that are just horrible. Mm -hmm. It's the truth. And one thing that I don't tolerate here at Lash Artistry is for people to take advantage of my artist. If I feel that you're now taking advantage, I just want your business is no longer welcome here. Yeah. Okay. But if they've fixed the problem, they tried their best, they went out of their way and you're still you know, with your shenanigans, then at that <laughs> point, I'm like, look, go to Amazing Lash Studio where they're going to put pre-maids on you and don't get wait. Get you in and out in an they hour. They get you in and out in an hour. You're going to look crazy. But if you want the luxury experience, Lash Artistry is where it's at. For sure. And that's it. Yeah. So you just don't, yeah, you can't take it personal either. You can't. Sometimes it just doesn't go your way. So you just kind of let it go. And not every customer is good for your business. No. Not every, so you don't need that quick 200 300 dollars or whatever sometimes it's not a good fit mm -hmm. and like a lot of people have trouble firing their clients oh i've done that Listen. sometimes you have to sometimes you have <laughs> olivia's to. laughing because once you start acting crazy i'm sorry yeah i'm not gonna act crazy with you mm -hmm. i have to maintain my composure and in order for me to do that <laughs> we can't, we can't do business together <laughs> and it's fine and yeah you just, you just say, i'm hey. not for everybody my lash artists are not for everybody mm -hmm. even though they're the best because I only hire the best. Um, sometimes, you know, they like the cheap lashes. So that means you can't come here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? For sure. And so it's just navigating through entrepreneurship with wisdom is really what we're trying to communicate. Mm -hmm. You have to have wisdom. You got to shut your mouth when people are acting crazy. Take a moment. One of the biggest lessons I learned, and I don't know if I told you this, but I'm going to tell you now. So remember when we stopped working together for that little bit? Mm -hmm. I made an emotional decision. <laughs> yeah. It cost me $7,000. And my husband was like, don't do it, babe. Don't do it. I was like, oh, because I want to also promote these other things. And he doesn't really do that. Da, 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 da. My husband's like, don't do it. What did I do? You did it. I did it. And I lost seven grand. And here we are working again. <laughs> I was like, that was dumb. That was dumb. And yeah. it cost me money. So I'm like, and now I learned my lesson, bro, to the end, bro, to, to the end. Because when you find people of integrity and man, they do a great job. And like now we've become friends. I told, I forgot who I told. I was like, Sohab is like, my annoying little brother that I want to choke because when we're recording things, he likes to look at his muscles. <laughs> this is the fact. What did I tell Olivia when you guys left? Listen, I, like, I look jacked in this video. <laughs> this brother, we were shooting a business training and he's like, I wanted to choke him. And that day I understood him more than I've ever understood him. You know why? I ask. Are you the youngest child? And he said, yes. 
I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> it, it all makes made sense. sense. I'm the oldest. We don't play around. <laughs> so now I get it. Yeah. I, I totally get it. But man, it's been it's been awesome. It's like been the best. we've been able to add to each other, and now we're adding to the public, and it's it's just the, like we. That, Go ahead. This is a good way we're going to end it. Next episode, we're talking about emotional intelligence and making decisions based off emotions. God, That's going to be the next one. I think we can talk hours about that, right? <laughs> I know he's going to have like one story and I'm going to have like five. Because <laughs> women, you know, oh, we tend man. to do that. I learned not to. It was a learned thing because as women, you know, sometimes we want to be like, I'll punch you with this thing right here, right? But... In business, I learned from that lesson, like, bro, you have to keep your circle small. You cannot work with just anybody. And um, it cost me seven grand. Yeah, but, yeah. You know. so that's, that's next episode. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe. We're still doing our giveaway, right? Yes. We're still doing our giveaway. Next so Friday. Next Friday? Yes. We'll announce it episode three. We'll announce it episode three. Like, subscribe to the channel and comment on the episode one what you think this podcast should be named we still don't have a name for it no we're just, we're just i saw one hit. that i really like though but you know you guys got some competition you so know you, so, but what are we giving away i'm giving away three months three of months free of my services i'll get you guys a ton of clients in three months and one of my online trainings crushing it guys the best training on the market doesn't get better than this doesn't get better nope all right, guys. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. Yeah. Let me see. It's not bad. No, it's cute. Yeah. It's just yeah. Literally just you just made more room for your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Thick are the same lines. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You started last time. That's how this happened. Because <laughs> you paid a hundred thousand dollars for a coach. So, fun fact: as you age, your chin recedes. Yeah. You see the side profile. <laughs> Period. <laughs> I want to look just like I've been through it. Why? I don't know. I mean, like you know, the lines that have like scars all over their face. That yeah. Like, I handle yeah. it. <laughs> Oh wow! You, yeah, he does look like a lion. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but them lions with all the scar, like you know, they just been through it. So when you shake a man's hand, you shake it firm, like Holy, hard. You have to, of course. Not hard though. Not on some weird stuff. If people grab it too hard, I'm like, dude, come. What are you trying to compensate for? Like, chill out. I, I shake people's hands hard. What's up? <laughs> That's actually very good. That's really good. It's the eye contact too. Mm -hmm. That's a great handshake. Listen, there was this guy that was trying to get cute with me at the gym. I shook his hand so hard. I'm like, what's up, man? <laughs> yeah. And he was like, ha, 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 ha. nice handshake. I'm like, thanks. That's, a, that's a great handshake right there. That's how you yeah, do a handshake right there. When they try to get I'm you like, like don't this. try to get cute. <laughs> don't try to get cute. When they try to get you like this, though, as a man. <laughs> I'm, like, man. I'm, I'm like, like, how about balls bigger than yours? <laughs> Go sit down. <laughs> Go sit down. Go get me some. <laughs> Go get me some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yeah, no, that's bad.